it's time for some chapter 11 math. Welcome to my channel, I'm Sean Kelly and this is the math portion of the financing chapter for the North Carolina real estate exam. I get that this can be a little tricky, but I hope this practice helps and I will try to simplify it. If you're looking for the full chapter 11 review video, I'll have it linked right up here in the corner. Hit the like button as a free way for you to show your support, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any more videos. Let's go and do some math. So we are going to get into some very basic concepts and numbers before we actually get into some practice questions. What is the difference between principal and interest? I get that this is an extremely basic question, but it's extremely important. Principal is the amount that is actually borrowed from the lender. Interest is the fee that you pay for borrowing that principal. At the beginning of a 30 year term, your principal payments are very tiny at the beginning and your interest payments are very large. However, your monthly payment is the same throughout that 30 year term. That alone will help you answer several of these math questions they're gonna to try to throw at you. So again, remember your PNI payment or your principal and interest payment stays the same month to month throughout the entire length of that loan. For example, if your PNI payment is $1,200 in your first month, it'll still be $1,200 on your 30th month and your 60th month until that loan is paid off. Origination fee. This is charged by the lender and is usually 1% of the loan amount. If your loan is $200,000, then you typically have to pay $2,000 for just the origination fee to the lender or to the bank. Discount points are also a percentage of your loan amount, but it is an optional method to lower your interest rate. One discount point is worth 1% of your loan amount. So again, if you have a $200,000 loan, one discount point would be worth $2,000. One discount point will reduce your interest rate by one eighth of a percent. So if you pay $2,000 discount point, it'll lower your 3% interest rate to a 2.875% interest rate. A loan to value ratio or LTV is the percentage of a loan relative to the property's value. On a basic 20% down home purchase, that leaves you with an 80% LTV on that purchase. You pay 20% on that loan, so the rest, that 80% is a loan, loan to value ratio. As you pay down the loan and as the property appreciates in value, the LTV gets smaller and smaller. Lastly, there are qualifying debt ratios. These are based on your income before taxes are taken out. Gross income. They answer the questions, how much house can you afford and how much debt can you take on? Typically, they are a 28% housing ratio and a 36% debt ratio. Okay, so these are all the math concepts from this chapter. Now let's get on to some problems. With all the next questions, be very careful that you're answering the question that they are actually trying to ask you. If they ask for annual interest, give them annual interest, not monthly and not daily. How do you do that? If they give you monthly interest, multiply that by 12 to get the yearly interest. Sometimes they'll just want the daily amount. So remember, there are 360 days in a year in real estate. That's 30 days a month. Starting with loan interest math at the basic level, how much annual interest is paid on a $200,000 loan if the interest rate is 3%? You just multiply that $200,000 by the 3% interest rate to get $6,000 of interest every year. If they ask for a monthly interest rate, you would just take that $6,000 and divide it by 12, 12 months. If they're asking for daily, you divide that $6,000 by 360 days. Now let's say you really suck at math and you try to divide $200,000 by 0 0.03 or the 3% interest rate. That answer would give you $6,666,666 of annual interest. Even if you suck at math, you know that's not right. Question two, a borrower has an interest rate of 5.5%, their loan amount is $62,000, how much interest will they pay on this loan in six months? They added an extra level of detail here, but you still answer it the same way you do question one. $62,000 times 5.5% will give you $3,410 of annual interest. Now you can either divide by two to get half a year, six months, or go the long way and be safe. Divide by 12 months and then multiply by six. So if you divide $3,410 by 12 months, you get $284.16. That is now our monthly amount. I'm going the long way here. Multiply that by six months to get $1,705 of interest in six months. Let's roll this concept backwards now. If a homeowner pays $5,800 every six months in interest 
and they have an interest rate of 6.5%, what was their loan amount? So let's get their yearly amount of interest first. 5,800 times two will give us a full year and that'll give us $11,600 of annual interest. Now we divide that by 6.5% interest rate to get us $178,461.54. Again, why do we divide now instead of multiplying? Well, if we multiply 11,600 times 6.5%, you'll get $754. Really? Why would someone pay $11,600 on $754 loan? They wouldn't. That answer doesn't make sense. Therefore, our answer is $178,461.54. Now we're going to get into PITI or principal interest taxes and insurance. In all of the math that we do in all of these chapters, this is the one that will require the most logic. It's less about knowing math and more about knowing what they are actually asking for. If they give you the total of PITI, the principal interest taxes and insurance, but they just want you to tell them what the P is, the principal is, you subtract out the ITI, the interest taxes and insurance. So question one, you bought a home with a loan of $45,300. Monthly P and I will be $7.70 per $1,000 of the loan amount. The annual property taxes are $514.40 and the insurance is $280 per year. What is the total PITI payment? So you really start off easy here. They straight up give you the last T and I here, the taxes and interest insurance. Your yearly taxes are $514.40. So divide that by 12 to get your monthly amount. That's $42.87. Yearly insurance is $280. They give you that straight up in the question. So now you divide that by 12 to get $23.33. So you now just need to get the P and I. Well, they almost give it to you. P and I is $7.70 per $1,000 of the loan amount. The loan is $45,300, right? Divide that by $1,000 to get 45.3. Then you multiply that by the $7.70 for a $348.81 P and I payment. Now you just add all of these up. 42.87 plus 23.33 plus 348.81 to get a PITI payment of $415 and oh, and one cent. It's actually really simple when you put the logic together. It's addition and subtraction, a little bit of division here, and you just add everything up. All right, question two. Sometimes they'll give you a ton of info, but they really just want a little piece of it. So let's do that here. The PNI is $560 monthly on a 30 year loan at 6% interest. The original loan amount is $60,000. What is the total amount of money paid to the lender? That is both principal and interest. They give it to you. $560 times 360 months is $201,600 total paid to the lender. Then they'll just ask for just the interest paid. So you take that $201,600 of total payments that we just got and subtract out the total loan amount of $60,000. That $60,000 is a principal, so we subtract that out. The interest is what is remaining. Total interest that will be paid to the lender at the end of this whole thing is $141,600. $141,600. There are so many variations of these problems. The important thing here is to break the problem down until you find the answer they are looking for. It's really not complicated math. We're not dealing with fractions, parentheses, exponents, or geometry here. Just pay attention to what they want. And I don't blame you. They make these things confusing and completely unrealistic, but you just gotta piece it together. Next is the math around how to figure out the loan balance after a payment is made. So the balance of a loan is $53,576. The interest rate is 6% for a 30 year loan. The PITI is $750. Taxes and insurance are $350. What is the loan balance after the next payment? So you subtract out the $350 to just leave the P&I remaining. 750 minus 350 is $400. Now we need to take out the interest. Interest is 6%. So 53,576 times that 6% 
is $3,214.56. But we need the monthly amount here, right? So you divide that by 12 to get $267.88 of monthly interest. So $400 minus that $267.88 leaves us with the principal. This is $132.12. Our loan, our current loan is $53,576. And then subtract out that principal payment, which gives us a next loan balance of $53,443.88. Discount points are next in line. So remember, these cost 1% of the loan amount and reduces your interest rate by 1 8th of a percent. So if someone is buying a home for $150,000 and getting a loan in the amount of $120,000. The buyer is going to buy four discount points. How much money will they need to pay for these discount points at closing? This is actually a really easy question here. $120,000 times 4% because a discount point is worth 1% of the loan amount, 120,000 times 4% is $4,800 in discount points. Don't make this complicated. If their interest rate was 5% and they bought four of these discount points, their new interest rate would be 4.5%. They would drop it by half a percentage because each point drops it by 1 8th. So if you have four, it drops it by 4 eighths. 4 eighths is a half. Now this one is a little fraction based to an extent but it's simple. Our last subject here will be on qualifying ratios. First, you get the gross monthly income, the income before taxes are taken out and given to the gov government. They may try to trick you and give you the amount after taxes are taken out, what they have left, but you need the gross monthly income, and then you figure out if it's under the 28% housing ratio or the 36% debt ratio. For debt, you count things like car payments, credit cards, and other loans, but not food, not utilities, and other day-to-day -day expenses. Question one, a borrower has gross income of $5,000 per month. Their house payment is $1,200. They have a car bill of $250 and a monthly credit card bill of $200. What are their debt ratios? So you take that $1,200 house payment and divide by $5,000 for the housing ratio. That's 24%, so we are good there. It's under that 28%. Then add all their recurring expenses, $1,200 for that house payment, $250 for the credit card, $200 for their, uh, or their car bill, and then $200 for the credit card. That gives you a total of $1,650, and then you divide that by their income of $5,000, that's 33%, so we are still good. It's under the 36% debt ratio. On the test, they will provide you with different debt ratios and housing ratios if they want it to change. If they don't provide it with you, you will need to remember the 28, 36% ratios. At the end of the day, guys, they are going to be mixing up combination after combination of these concepts to throw at you. Understand the fundamentals so you will know exactly what they're asking for, and you can break down these questions with ease and then give them the answer they want. Couple more notes here. On almost every math question on this test, you will be able to knock out two of the answers, leaving you with a 50-50 shot. Also, you can literally miss every single math question on this exam and still pass the test. Now, you would have to get almost every other question correct, so I don't recommend that method, but settle down and don't be scared. So practice your practice questions and complete those without cheating. There's really no better practice than that. Again, the chapter 11 full review will be linked down in the description below so you can check it out there. I have to drop a little plug here at the end, but if you haven't decided on a brokerage firm yet to affiliate with, I will have a link to a video I've made right up here showing you how to choose a firm and which firm I chose. I'm with Keller Williams, and if you decide to join Keller Williams, First, do your research, do your interviews. If you still decide to join Keller Williams, I would love it if you put me down as a sponsor during your application. It greatly helps my business. That is, if you decide that Keller Williams is a great fit for you. If you have any questions on that, hit me up in my Facebook Messenger or email that I have linked down below. Thank you so much, everyone. Hit that like button below if this provided any value to you at all. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any other future videos. I will see you on the next one. Thanks. Thank you.